I apologize, but this video will be a little wordy. Uh, please follow along. Up to now, we've been preparing our project for management. We're going to continue that here, but we're also going to discuss strategies that will greatly improve your competitive edge. This is the task tab. This is where all the tasks for the project reside. The tasks we are viewing here were imported when we imported our EP file for our project. You can add tasks manually if you want to, to create your project manually, or if you just find yourself needing to add a task for your project. To add tasks manually, just click the Add New Task button. To create a new task, start by giving your task a name. If you want, you can give it a description as well. The next three fields, Supervision, Margin, and Material Handling, kind of depend on your estimating and accounting practices. Let me explain. Field level supervision is not free. It has to be paid for. There are two ways to do this. You can create a separate budget for it in direct job expenses or possibly overhead, or you can include it in your labor budget. If you do not create a separate budget for it, then it will have to come out of your labor budget by default. Many contractors overlook this cost, especially at the foreman level. If they've forgotten it, it's my contention that it has been captured in the labor budget by fluffing this budget to include it. Personally, I prefer it to be there. My research tells me that it typically equates to about 10% of the total labor budget. When I assume a project, if I don't receive a separate budget for form and supervision, I'm going to enter 10% in this supervision field. That will take 10% on the installation budget per task away from the worker that is performing the task and give it to the foreman for managing the task and worker. Once you track this supervision cost, you'll be able to fine tune it, but 10% is a good place to start. This will also force that foreman to wear his own tools until he or she reaches 10 employees. For example, if he or she only has five workers, that's 50% of their time, devoted to supervision, and 50% of their time devoted to installing material. A lot of foremen assume that once they acquire that title, they don't have to work with their tools anymore. Now, if that foreman only has one worker under them, and they don't install material because they're too busy supervising, then 100% of their time is being spent on supervision, and that's nonsense. The program defaults at 10% supervision, but you can adjust the percentage to anything you want it to be from 0 to 100%. I recommend that you start at 10% and then adjust it after you've had the chance to track a few projects, unless you include a separate budget for it. Material handling is very similar. Those materials need to get from the connex to the work area somehow. Typically, the journeyman is responsible for gathering their own material, possibly with the help of an apprentice. In this case, we would want to enter 0% here and give all the material handling labor to the journeyman or apprentice. But there's a better way. Personally, I want my workers busy installing material not wandering the site looking for it. When workers are responsible for gathering their own material, they make a huge mess of material storage areas, many times to the point of making such a mess that nobody can find anything, further exacerbating lost hours. You only get paid for the amount of material you install each month, so I want as much time as possible focused on installing material. If you have a project with around 9 or 10 workers, 
I'll bring in a lower paid material handler and have them deliver material to the work area so my workers can stay right there installing material. I've developed a way to make this really easy and it's included in this software. Bear with me and we'll get to that soon. If you use a material handler, 10% is a good place to start until you've had a chance to track these costs. The software defaults at 10%, but it is adjustable. Margin is a totally different animal. By the way, all of these costs can be set to be different for individual tasks, or they can all be set the same for all tasks. One use for margin would be if you were working on a remodel, and let's say you discovered an abandoned existing home run conduit, that you could repurpose for your new installation that ran about halfway to where you needed it. You wouldn't want to give the worker all of the time estimated for that work if half is already complete. So you could enter 50% in here and only allow them half the labor. Another use would be to improve production. I will bet you a dollar to a donut that if you went out to one of your projects and watched the foreman dish out tasks to their workers in the morning, you would hear them say something along the lines of, Joe, I want you to run a conduit from here to there and come see me when you're done. Now, Joe didn't receive a time limit on this task, so how long is it going to take? The answer is that it's going to take as long as it takes. With this system, since we're using actual estimate data to determine task duration, we're going to give Joe a hard deadline to complete that task, like 6.27 hours. And we're going to track his time against that task to keep him honest. This gives us a great opportunity to find out just what Joe and his teammates are capable of. Once we track a few projects to find out what normal is and adjust our estimating to match our real production, we could enter, say, 5% here. This would take back 5% of Joe's hours and speed him up. If that works, we could try 10% on the next project. Now, at some point, Joe is not going to be able to keep up, but this will tell us what our crews are capable of in case we need to be really competitive on a certain project. Over time, we could even get our crews used to this tempo, so it becomes normal to them. If we bid at the higher rate and schedule at a faster rate, that would boost your margin. One thing you're going to find is that when you tell people how much time they have to complete work, instead of telling them to do this and come see me when you're done, you're going to see an immediate boost in production. I'm not a fan of running your workers to death on every project, but I certainly recommend trimming the fat to get them to a comfortable pace through better organization. Here are four checkboxes. The first is milestone task. In this case, we're considering milestone tasks, tasks that need to be completed, but are probably not tasks that are included in the estimate. This would include things like material deliveries, equipment deliveries, and specialty tools. Normally, when I use this option, I also check hide from job summary and hide from timesheet. Often these are items the foreman is managing through his or her 10% supervision costs and are captured through the supervision task. More on this soon. So I don't want these milestones to clutter my scheduling and reporting because they're not needed. Let me show you what this looks like when it's added to the master schedule. The tasks colored orange are milestone tasks. Obviously, if we're going to run underground conduit, for example, we're going to need something to dig a trench with, like a backhoe. 
whether the project manager or foreman on site makes this list of milestone tasks, they need to think deep here. You have no idea how many times I've been present on critical tasks like a big concrete pour and the crew forgot to pick up the vibrator or didn't have enough extension cord to get to the work area to run the vibrator. When I make these lists, I generally include my crew to get as many mines on it as I can. Dead time interrupts getting material installed. You only get paid when material gets installed. So make sure whoever makes this list thinks deep. The installation tasks listed below these milestones are not ready to start until all of the milestone tasks have been marked off as complete here. When I know I'm starting a new phase of construction, I always open the master schedule to see if my milestones are complete. Your project manager will want to do this as well. You can globally adjust supervision, margin, and material handling percentages here. This will set the same percentage for all tasks. Just enter the desired percentage for each category and click the global adjust button. 